other religions, especially Christianity, have had their own crusading phases, at times exalting their universal mission with comparable fervor and resorting to analogous methods of conquest and forced conversions. Spanish conquistadores abolished ancient civilizations in Central and South America in the 16th century in a similar spirit of world-conquering finality. The difference is that the crusading spirit subsided in the Western world or took the form of secular concepts that proved less absolute or less enduring than religious imperatives. Over time, Christendom became a philosophical and historical concept, not an operational principle of strategy or international order. That process was facilitated because the Christian world had originated a distinction between the things which are Caesar's and the things that are God's, permitting an eventual evolution toward pluralistic secular-based foreign policies within a state-based international system Uh, It was also driven by contingent circumstances, among them the relative unattractiveness of some of the modern crusading concepts called on to replace religious fervor, militant Soviet communism, preaching world revolution or race-based imperialisms. The evolution in the Muslim world has been more complex. Certain periods have inspired hopes for a convergence of approaches. On the other hand, as recently as the 1920s, a direct line of political succession from the Prophet Muhammad was still asserted as a practical reality of Middle Eastern statecraft by the Ottoman Empire. Since this empire collapsed, the response in key Muslim countries has been divided between those who have sought to enter the new state-based ecumenical international order as significant members, adhering to deeply felt religious beliefs, but separating them from questions of foreign policy, and those who see themselves as engaged in a battle over succession to universal authority within a stringent interpretation of the traditional Islamic concept of world order. Over the past 90 years, the exponents of its view have represented some of the outstanding figures of the era. Among them are counted some of the centuries most far-sighted statesmen and most formidable religious absolutists. The contest between them is not concluded. Under some Middle Eastern government, believers in state-based and faith-based universal orders coexist, if occasionally uneasily. To many of its faithful, especially in a period of resurgent Islamism, the modern ideology seeking to enforce Muslim scripture as the central arbiter of personal, political, and international life, the Islamic world remains in a condition of inescapable confrontation with the outside world. In the early Islamic system, non-aggression treaties with non-Muslim societies were permissible. According to traditional jurisprudence, These were pragmatic arrangements of limited duration, allowing the Islamic party to secure itself from threats while gathering strength and cohesion. Based on a precedent set by the early Islamic state, in entering truces with foes it eventually vanquished, they were limited to terms of specific duration, up to 10 years, that could be renewed as needed. In this spirit, in the early centuries of Muslim history, Islamic legal rulings stipulate that a treaty cannot be forever, since it must be immediately void 
should the Muslims become capable of fighting them?